So on the show today, back on the show today, Tad Hargraves. So Tad Hargraves, Mr. Marketing for Hippies, the man with the beard. Tad is, uh, what can I say, my, one of my favorite people in the marketing world. Now, that doesn't sound like much because I only, only really like three people in the marketing world, but he's one of them. And I've rec been recommending him to my students for many, many years. I get him in to do guest sessions, you know, paid guest sessions for my my mentees, we just saw him one of those. My, my mentees love him. They were so jealous of all the ones that got one-to-ones with him. I had to pay for one-to-ones with the ones who didn't get a chance because his advice is so valuable. Brings a bit of heart and humanity to the whole business world. And I know so many people have had their businesses turned upside down. So I thought this might be a real service to the whole, whole listener community. So Tad, welcome. Thank you so much. Well, I've enjoyed working with your people a lot too. It's been, it's been fun. Yeah, this COVID thing has really, um, but you know, it, it, proper to say that some businesses are doing very well. If you happen to sell colloidal silver, you're doing great. <laughs> um, gloves or hand gel, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's, 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 this is not an across the board uh, that every business is struggling, but certain businesses are, and particularly those businesses that uh, rely on in-person uh, interaction you know for example my business it being mostly online hasn't really been i don't think impacted at this point who knows where that'll go but uh yeah if you have a business that is in person you know and particularly in the healing arts or your yoga teacher or you're doing massage it's very difficult right now and I guess group businesses fall into different categories, don't they? So there's the ones that are not that affected. You know, they're doing their thing. There's a few, as you say, that are doing better. There's a lot that have had a, a big change, like they've needed to go online. Like we've helped about 4,000 yoga teachers go online in the last two weeks. There's a couple of free workshops on that, um, which for some was really easy. They were like, oh, we should have done this years ago. You know, for others was a real struggle. I think some will stick with it, never go back to working in studios. Some won't. And then we've got other businesses like people like my massage therapist that just can't go online. I mean, you know, yeah. what options has she got? So there's, there's a few different groups, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's true. That's true. So I would say with the, um, well, in both cases, as soon as you, maybe to frame this, there's something I call the inverse law of geography. So the inverse law of geography means that the, the, the broader the geographic range you're working with, the more narrow the niche is gonna to have to be, and vice versa too. So if you live in a small town, your niche has to necessarily be very broad. You have to work with a lot of people. You're probably a generalist. You have a few different gigs. You're the general doctor of the town. You can't just specialize in back pain because if there's only 100 people there and only one of them has back pain, you know, that's your only client. But if you go online on the internet, it's, you it really behooves you to be extremely focused. And if you're in a town like London, England, well then it's somewhere in the middle, you know, something like this. So yeah, as soon as people move online, they need to, to, to get really focused. And so what we're talking about is niche there fundamentally, you know, this question of what do you want to be known for and the kind of general body work, general, um, you know, yoga stuff, uh, that people do doesn't cut it on the internet you know here, here's a phrase that no one has um ever said in the history of the world mm -hmm. is hey hey janet guess what i found on the internet there's a, a life coach can you believe my luck <laughs> or a generic <laughs> yoga class right yeah. like if yeah. i'm offered i'm now i've got five yoga classes within walking distance of me when i'm walking but on the internet, I've got 500 yoga classes advertised to me. If I look, another 5,000. So it better be one that suits my needs, right? And I've only seen these people that I've already got relationship with, like my yeah. friend Vidya Dasa, whose class I've been going to for years. Of course, I'm going to go to his online class because it's him, you know, yeah. or is a micro niche. You know, if there's, if, there's, if there's a real specialization, if it's called yoga with swearing uh, for uh, people that, you know organizing stress workshops or something i'm there you know like it, it has to be like my my jam so it's this niching comes even more important doesn't it online yeah it, it, to me it's mandatory online <clears throat> people can can kind of get away with it locally because as you say if people are i don't know 
out in the community and doing things, there's a, a natural word of mouth that spreads. And over time, you know, the, you can really develop a local following. But online, there's no foot traffic or there's very little of this. People just going to stumble across you. I, you know, I don't know what the stats are, but I would guess most websites are never visited. Yeah. Well. Never go. And so, so yeah, this niche thing becomes very important. And of course, there are plenty of examples of people who've found ways to niche, let's say, in yoga. And um, the uh, there's actually an article. I'll just I'll send you the link to it here. This yeah, is... I'll just for listeners, so how can they get hold of that? Because they ah uh, yeah, well you go to nichingspiral dot com slash articles slash yoga. Great, and there's all these different types of yoga on there, like death metal yoga, and yeah. you know there's there's a beer yoga, there's all kinds of things, right? Yeah, and in fact, if you just go to nichingspiral dot com slash articles, you'll find one with permaculture. You'll find another uh, a number of examples of what uh, this could be. But yeah, you know, so for example, Tommy Rosen has uh, yoga for addiction recovery. Uh, which I think is really brilliant. So he combines 12 steps with yoga. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. And so then you have this built-in audience of people in the addiction recovery thing who maybe don't resonate exactly with the 12 steps. You know, they do this yoga and then they go to 12 step meetings and culturally it doesn't feel like it fits. And suddenly you put something out like this. And, you know, if you, if you really niche well often the impact for people is this kind of i can't believe this exists oh my right. god yeah yeah yeah. it's made for me it reminds that, me of falling in love you know when you fall in love and there's that like oh my god like wow where did you come from there's that like whoa you know what what you also like this wow so cool like it's got that kind of quality hasn't it when you find something that's like perfect niche for you yeah yeah it's you know i have an ebook called the art of relevance and the subtitle is a uh, something about how to get your ideal client to say uh that's me not that's nice because this is the the death of if you know things online somebody say oh that's nice that's good somebody's doing it but not for them and what we want our ideal clients to say is oh that's me when they read our sales oh my god that's exactly what i'm dealing with so uh this is something that really needs to be considered is you know as i, I just had a i'm running my 30-day marketing for hippies 101 uh program and a woman She's a voice coach and trainer and all this. And she's, of course, not able to work uh, locally right now. And so she's she's been thinking about taking it online anyways, and this is giving a nudge. And one of the um, niches she's been thinking of focusing on is, is a, a, the voice work for women who've been sexually assaulted because, um, there's often a connection between a woman's reproductive organs and the, the mm. jaw. The There's throat. a static connection. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, beautiful, you know, to me, this is very, could you imagine you're a woman and you, uh, you've gone through that and then you, you know, but you also love to sing. You also are, you're drawn to that in some way. <laughs> you come across that, you know, then the question becomes, okay, what would the hubs be? Where would you find this? But this could be, you know, potentially choirs, potential other vocal coaches who don't want to focus on that thing, you know. Um, and then also anyone who works around sexual assault, it's like, hey, here's another way that, you know, women could deal with this. So this is part of the, the, the benefit of niche. When people have a, a generic thing, they try to take it online. Then you say, okay, great. Uh, and, and this so they come to you and say, hey, I want to go online, great. Uh, so uh, what are the hubs? You talk about this hub marketing thing, you know, you got to find places where the, your people already are. Great. Okay. So uh, here's my niche is uh, people who are stressed who want to be less stressed. Oh, where should I find <laughs> people who, you know, I, somebody in the program the other day, a poor fellow, his niche is just not that great. It's like, yeah, it's middle-aged men who, uh, yeah, want to get results in their life. <laughs> like, you literally can't be any more generic. Right. Yeah. What are the yeah. hubs for that? There aren't any. Or everything's a hub for them or you know it's it's people, not you big mistake is people try and go after everyone they end up with no one right like this yeah. is what we see and particularly with this situation that's happened i think it just reinforces what a message you've been putting out for a long time which is find your tribe find the thing that you love find the thing you're good at find the hubs of the people that need that and hang out that and offer them that see if there's a good fit and yeah i i kind of is there anyone that shouldn't be going online? Because there's this big rush right now. I think we've we're past the initial panic stage. So there was yeah. like panic buying. There was also panic selling, right? 
So people were panic buying the toilet roll, whatever. They also started panic selling things straight away. And um, now I, I write that down. That's good. Um, but now it seems like people are settling down a little bit. There's a sort of settling into a new reality. Like no one quite knows where it's going, but maybe there's people that shouldn't be working online. I mean, who would be in that category? Um, well, God, ultimately none of us. Wouldn't it be nice if we just lived local lives in our neighborhoods? <coughs> Mar married our cousins and died five miles from where we were born. Really? You want to go there? You want that life? I uh, kind of like a mix of like a little bit mix of the old school and the new, the, the new. We'll have that conversation. <laughs> another time. We're talking to a hippie here. So, uh, okay. But it, I don't know if there's anyone who it couldn't work for. It's, it's hard for me to think about that. You know, no. of course, therapists work online the, okay so let's say with body workers because this a little bit different than yoga where you could teach a group class and uh all this with body work people would say okay well that's the one that can't go online because you you can't uh, do the work that you're trained in and certified in uh, and all this but <clears throat> let's say you wanted to um pick a very particular problem that you could help people with and let's just say that's migraines and so you do craniosacral this really helps people with migraines um well that this is the challenge okay so this is my core thing your ideal clients on island a where they're struggling with a problem some symptoms they don't like they want to be on island b where there's a result that they're craving and our business is like a boat that could take them from one island to the other so the massage is the boat that takes them from uh migraines to no migraines as an example but of course, there's a lot of ways to get from island A to island B. And people get so trapped in their boat. This is part of the challenge. They get so stuck in, no, but I have this modality and this is all I do. Now, the truth is, of course, that's great until it's not great, until nobody can use it. So it's part of this is building in a bit more resilience to our business and robustness. Um, you know, I think in the modern world, probably for just financial economic security, there's probably three things all of us should have going at this point. Mm -hmm. One is the local side of the business. Because the truth is, of course, now we're seeing one vulnerability right now, which is uh, people can't get together physically uh, uh, you know, much. But the other one is what if uh, WordPress got hacked? The internet goes down. Yes. Yeah, the, or Facebook is taken down, or you know, all the, whatever tools you use, yep. they don't exist anymore. So there's, there is a vulnerability to online business. But so I think there's an online component that uh, most of us should have. Then there's this, or the live component, then there's the online component. And both of those are very important. Uh, because yeah, if, if uh, something happened online, good to have the local thing you can rely on. And if something happens locally with, with COVID, good to have an online portion that, so you're not completely hamstrung. And the third, we should be growing our own food. We should be supporting this kind of more local food movement so that we're not so reliant. I mean, that, to me, that's another, you know, if money gets tight, well, you can still grow your own food. So I would just say those three are probably okay. Okay. should all I'm be. I'm definitely seeing those. And as you say, if you have had an overly specialized business, it's like an animal that has an overly specialized niche. They use the same word in the ecosystem, right? It's very vulnerable to a change in, you know, some species moving, some species dying. And that, that over niching in, in a, just one particular way of doing things, I think, is um, something of the past. And as, as you say, it's how people, let's take my mass, my person does my massage, for example. So what she's really doing is helping certain kinds of people relax. And she knows about music. She knows about oils. She knows about uh, psychological techniques. She's very empathic. She listens to people while she's massaging them. So she actually has a whole bunch of other skills rather than just being able to put her hands on people. Yes. Yeah. And it's, Right, so people already have skills and more skills could be gained. I mean, this is one of the things that I would hope would come from the COVID thing is people start to look at what they do, uh, let's say for body workers, more as the journey and not just the boat. Because of course people are going to be looking for that particular type of massage. You know, there's a massage you got one time while you were traveling, you come home and you want to, oh, does anyone do that modality? Because I really like Bowen technique or I really like the Esalen style massage. And, so of course that will be one of the things, but of course in this situation, you can't do the technique. So um, I would hope people start thinking about a journey. And to me, the questions would be, I mean, first of all, is there something that you struggled with in your own life 
that this kind of body work helped you through because sometimes that's true and if it's stress and relaxation okay well that's that's a good beginning it's a bit general but you could you could focus on what's stress and relaxation for, for particular types of people in particular situations you know um you know for truck drivers who have to travel a long distance you know you could design and i'm sure i bet you if we google that right now we'd find it you know yoga for truck drivers i bet you that exists <laughs> um because oh they have really particular needs so the the question then becomes okay if i were to focus let's say on the migraines well what else could be useful for somebody with migraines uh so first of all yeah there may be certain essential oils there's probably books that are written about migraines that are very useful there could be um uh, dietary things there are almost certainly certain stretches there are certain foods that are indicated or contraindicated there will be uh, meditations that you might be able to do when something comes on um et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's there's a whole package that you can create and there could be literally a package you mail to people physically. There could be a download online sort of uh, package that people could get. And so this is the type of thing to start like, well what's okay, you know, who do I see? Who naturally comes to me? What are the issues that those people have? Tad, it um, strikes me, I want to go a little deeper than 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 often people might go with marketing this strikes me there's two really big skills here like one is listening the ability to go what's really needed in the market what are people needing now and the yeah. second one is ad ad adaptability so I've, I've seen some very different learning curves and some very different turning circles you can call them you know some people are like these big oil tankers that just seem to keep going in the same like several weeks after covid hit i was getting marketing emails that were like nothing was happening yeah. And it was like, dude, that's not relevant anymore. You sound weird now. And yeah. others, people I saw adapt incredibly fast. It seems like this has become a sort of critical meta skill in a slightly chaotic world. Yeah, it's, yes, we need to uh, be able to, I had the same thing. I'm seeing emails like this. Or, you know, YouTube's going up from this health guy and it was clearly, you should be talking about COVID right now. He just kept talking about his keto or whatever in, in, in a general way so yes yeah, good to be able to adapt and also you know it's good to know that with niching there's two reasons your niche will probably not last forever one is you will change you will grow and adapt and have different desires and opinions than you used to but second the marketplace will change and when it changes if you don't uh yeah you can be kind of eliminated and you know be a victim about it but it's just good to know okay these two things are just always and every once in a while you have both of them static so celebrate that when that happens <laughs> it, doesn't it does happen. nothing last does it? i mean we did this course on how to work online and we offered it for free just as a service but you know, it was good for us too good pr good email capture uh but it literally lasted two or three weeks and then after that everyone was online <laughs> and you know the first one had 2,000 people, the second one 1,000, the third one 500. And it was, uh, you know, we, so we trained a lot of people, we helped a lot of people, but it was like, that's an example of a thing. We went, oh, we can help with that. We know about that. We like doing that. We've been doing online for a while because the conference. And then it was gone. And that's okay, right? You know, like, that's fine. Well, and, you know, here's the thing I would say, though, is that it's, um, there. yes, it's good for people to be able to respond and pivot well. But there can also, as you said, there, there can be a reactivity that happens. Yeah. There can be a, yeah. people just start giving everything away for free, for example. Or, yeah. oh God, I need to change my whole business model. And I would just urge everyone just to you know, pump on the brakes a little bit. Yeah. Not that everything needs to change. It's that, uh, I mean, yes, if you do something physical, okay, then take it online. But I'd be looking at this as, a, okay, how do I, I was just thinking about this this morning, that when pe whenever you create, ideally, Whenever you create some sort of package or offering, to me, in the background, there should be this, is this something I could do over and over and over again over the years? Is this something I could repeat? Because one of the places I see a lot of entrepreneurs burn out is always coming up with new offers. Every quarter, there's right, some right, right, right. new workshop they're doing, some whole new twist on everything. And then the consequence of that, number one, that's a lot of work, you know, like a rocket ship taking off uses all, almost all of its fuel in the takeoff. And so yep, you don't get yep. benefits from it versus the second time you do that same <laughs> workshop, 10 times easier. Um, every time it gets easier, every time. So, and that's more profitable for you. So it's good to be having that in the back of the mind. What could I have that I could do over and over? So as you're pivoting, just to have that, in the consciousness of 
is this thing I'm pivoting to, is this something I could really see doing for a long time, uh, ultimately? It's and it, fine to scramble for a moment, but we've got to settle, if we're going to settle into a sort of new normal around this, where there'll be more online, then, okay, how do I want this to look? Is this a niche I really want to focus on? Yeah, um, yeah. Long term, how does this fit in with the other offers I do? Do I want to be doing this in five years? And as you say, so much the energy is coming up with a new idea. And we came up with this idea of um, the niche of one of my students is she helps women who are too nice. And I really like it because it's, it's, it's just like women who are too nice and they're particular kind of women, like slightly alternative, but not too alternative is how she puts it. And that's implicit in the brand, you know, with the pictures and the imagery and the words. And she's great at this and I back her up. So I'm like the yang guy. She's the more yin person. who's like a recovering nice person. And we did it once and it went pretty well. We made it, you know, made a few hundred pounds each. And she said, oh, that was okay, wasn't it? You know, business wise. I said, no, it's great because we can repeat that now. We, yes. we can run that same workshop every two or three months. There's always going to be people who are too nice. You're going to get better and better at this. We now, all we have to do is change the date on that website. It's yeah. such little work to put it on again. And she realized that, oh shit. And also it's scalable. So it's not like we've got it online. The beauty of online is the scalability. So if we had 20 people or something turn up, let's say it's 200 next time. She, no more effort for her. It's the same three hours energy. It's the same bit of prep work. So she can really go big with that and, you know, make that. And it's something she loves as well. So it's not like she's just quickly doing something reactive. It's like, this is something that I'm committed to and I've really thought about. And here's, here's the part that maybe people don't think about, but let's say you're that craniosacral therapist and you've just been a generalist. You've seen a lot of people. And so this happens, you realize, okay, I could still make money online. So what am I going to do? Okay, I focus on the migraine thing. And you start putting out content around that. And you say, look, we can't work together, but here's some things you can do at home. And you offer a course on that and uh, et cetera. And let's say it goes pretty well. And people say, wow, this person actually knows quite a bit about migraines. And that's what you're doing during this time is learning more about that condition. And, and uh, you're learning all the research about it and what's cutting edge and all the alternative, everything. And so you're coming up with them, you're doing the research that your people don't wanna have to do. So you, you put that out and people say, wow, that's really amazing. And then the whole COVID thing passes, as of course it will. And um, you put out an email and say, hey, you know, it looks like it's time to open shop. And I've been doing, as you might've seen this, this uh, migraine thing. If you'd like to work with me in person, now on the migraines, and you've just built all this trust with people. Now, of course, not all of them will be local. But here's the other thing is, I mean, shit, the last um, uh, living room sessions, I, I do a workshop here in my living room. I did a woman came from Brazil to be there. Uh, and she loves my, she actually created slowmarketing.com or something, but because she loves my work so much and wants to bring it to Brazil. And so she came up to meet me just to know that I mean, i'm not encouraging people to be traveling around the world in general but this will happen you can become yeah, known yeah, for yeah. A certain thing. if there's relationship people will pay a lot of money or go to extreme lengths yeah. to get to we had someone from california come to one of mine in brighton that was like it's built two or three years of online trust building with that woman before she just and then people will will, will go to extreme lengths they will tell well, the friends yeah a woman in my mentorship program she had the, the reverse of your situation uh, showgirlawakening.com and she does burlesque as a kind of women's empowerment and we spent a lot of time on her website and she uh, had a woman named Claire from England who just literally stumbled across like Google stumbled across her website and booked a ticket to go to San Francisco to go to her weekend workshop because it was such a fit so that's just yeah. good to know there will be some translation because then let's say you're that cranial psychotherapist and you focused on the migraines and and, uh, and then you open up shop and pe some people come back and say, you know, I've been having migraines. My friend had migraine. And so you start getting even more live in-person business that's focused on the niche. Not that it all needs to be. And then you say, you know what? It'd be good to do a retreat on this. There's a lot you can do in a retreat and journaling exercises and you know, looking at the emotional roots of this. And then people could travel because you're this known as this. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. If you've got enough reputation and you make a big enough offer, Interestingly, as people would travel for bigger offers, I've found, you know, five days, seven days, sometimes more. And a couple of things I want to ask you about then. So one is what about the idea of sort of repackaging? I mean, this is one thing I didn't tell me to think it was a good idea or not, is I went, okay, I need some more online workshops because I've lost a lot of my face-to-face -face workshops. I didn't want to invent something totally new. I didn't want to try and start a new reputation. 
But these yeah. things I was already known for, like did a load of stuff on Purpose a few years ago. We had a good course called Purpose Black Belt. People really liked it. I only stopped it because I was, you know, it wasn't totally on purpose for me. But, you know, I knew it was a good offer and we just repurposed it into an online workshop. Um, or there was other things that I was doing face to face that we shifted online. And so it's more like a repurposing of stuff that I already had some reputation for rather than completely trying to create a whole new thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say that's wise. Uh, repurposing is very big. I mean, gosh, <clears throat> if you're doing live talks about things, I think about a woman in Edmonton who was a homeopath and she really wanted to specialize in autoimmune conditions or that's a lot who came to her and she wanted help. And so I said, well, you know, once a month I would just do a, uh, a live workshop, you know, uh, where you explain your point of view. And she said, okay, so the first month I'll do autoimmune. Can it, what should I do the second month? I said, no, no, no. That workshop every month for a year, the same workshop, because also you get to be better at it. Get better and better at it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And then, as as we said, it gets easier and easier. But then, of course, she could just take that and put it online. She could take that, uh, record it, and sell the video of it. She could take that, get it transcribed, edit it down to a tight ebook, and sell that. I mean, she could take that, turn that into an online home study course, and offer that. And it's the same content. And this is. So there's a meta thing. I mean, so the niche is the starting point, but then there's this whole conversation about business model. And, you know, there's the whole uh, sales funnel is the idea. You know, you have, it's wider at the top, narrower at the bottom. At the top, there's just the the things that are cheaper, less risk, more people will try those. And at the bottom, there's your sort of premium offer and whatever it is. And I really urge people to be thinking about their business model because the robustness, the resilience of your business doesn't come from the niche uh, at all. It comes from the business model and the structure of the business. And most people's business model is so not resilient. They have, you know, if you could, Andrea Lee wrote a book, it's not available anymore, sadly, called Pink Spoon Marketing. But the analogy was this, uh, you know, the, the top end of the sales funnel, you have the pink spoon. You go to an ice cream shop, you can get a little sample of ice cream. Then if you like it, you get a, a ice cream cone. If you like that, you get a gallon of ice cream. You like that, you can get a cake. You like that, you could join some ice cream related club where you do all sorts of ice cream related activities. Milk and cows make an ice cream. I don't know. <laughs> there are strange worlds that most people have people, never. Yeah, there are worlds we don't know about. But you know, you go to a bar, it's like, could I get a, a sample of that beer? Could I get a pint of that beer? Could I get a pitcher of that beer? Can I get a keg? You know, there's this whole uh, sales fund. But the more familiar maybe to this scene would be the, uh, there's the yoga studio. So there's a free dropping class. There's a paid class. Then there's your uh, memberships, 10 pass, 30 day pass. There's the workshops, retreats, and then there's the teacher trainings. And it doesn't have to be five levels, could be three. But the idea is with the business model to to have levels of it first of all so it can be a little bit more robust because what most people do i see is they rely entirely on that ice cream cone level for the body work side or you know teaching yoga classes so it's just well do you want to book another massage hey hope to see you at another yoga class and that's the extent of the business model versus having all these levels really dialed out and the place i recommend people start at this point especially if you're thinking about building the online uh offer is because the easy thing is, oh, I'll just do a little e- e-class of some kind. I'll do a yeah, yeah. seminar. Well, fine, but you're not going to make a ton of money on that, frankly. Um, you know, or I'll sell an ebook. Well, shit, for what, 10, 20, 30, 40 bucks? You're going to sell it? How many of those? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been in business, uh, let's say full time, 15 years. I have now 14 ebooks, and I think I make 1200 a month US selling ebooks. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And I've been doing this a long time. And that's a lot of Yeah, and you're, you're well known. You've got a great system. It, and it takes a long time to write an ebook. It's just a painful process. So anyways, the thing to do is to start with the premium level. Uh, and there's two blog posts I recommend. I've got marketingforhippies.com slash packages and marketingforhippies.com slash premium. Um, the packages one just looks at this idea of creating packages. The premium one gives you 32 specific things you could add to a premium program, a lot of which could work online. Here's the other thing. So yeah, we can't get together now, uh, but that doesn't mean that can't be part of your offer. So for example, right. you know, this, this um, craniosacral therapist could say, look, you got migraines. I get it. They're, they're shitty. You got the dancing lights. You can't see, and you got to lie down and it ruins you for days. 
here's what I'm going to do. Here's a package. And here's the, it has online and live components to it. The online components you can use right now, but it also has these live components. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. the retreat that you just get access to, you can just come, uh, it's a part of the package. Also, you get six one-on-one -on -one sessions or three one-on-one -on -one sessions that can be used after all this has passed. I think there's a few people that are going to do, for, some people are just going to be researching now. Some people are going to be building online trust. You know, mm -hmm. some people are going to be really delving into their own practice and building something amazing. And then we're going to see in October, November, December, just some awesome businesses put out. We're going to see some awesome, they talk about the COVID babies, you know, the people that are having sex right now because they're bored and they're going to have babies, you know, later. I think there's going to be business babies that come out of this. And there's yeah. going to be people that have built a lot of trust through free online stuff that hasn't made them much money. It's one of the things I'm doing. And, um, you know, later on, yeah, hey, I've got an event in Brighton. We can all come to Brighton. It's going to be amazing. We've just spent six months looking at each other on a computer screen. Yeah. How cool would it be to get on the train to Brighton and come do a training? You know, we can all hug. It will be fucking amazing. You know, like, I think that's going to be warm. Um, Tag, yeah. listen, go off, go on off you. Oh, uh, it's true what you're saying. <laughs> so, uh, so I've got a case study I want to bring to you. One, just purely selfishly, I think you'll like the case study. And two, I think it illustrates something about sales. Um, so we've put out this thing for doctors and nurses for free stress management training. It's called COVID Calm. And it's a, a workshop that doctors and nurses anywhere in the world can tune into to get free stress management training. Because right now they're really in the thick of it. And, you know, we, we've tested it with doctors and nurses. First thing, I, it's very interesting working with public sector people because they weren't used to business mentality. And they both went, wow, you're doing this really quick. And they were like, why do you keep asking our advice? I'm like, because you're my market. It has like, they renamed almost everything I do. Uh, I said, does this work? Does this work? Come and give us feedback. Does this work? It was an iterative design process, which is for me how business works. And they, to them, this was amazing. And they gave us great advice. So thank you to all the doctors and nurses that helped, particularly Dr. Rob and Maz and um, my Russian friend. And what was interesting then is like, we've got great, we've got a great training. We know that they're going to like the training. And now we have this challenge of how do we sell it? And you might say, yeah, but it's free. So I think it's a great case study where we're trying to do something good. We know it's a good product, but it's still, we still need to now sell it to their doctors and nurses of the world. Where would you begin with that? Um, that's interesting. I mean, the very first thing that comes to the elements I'd be looking at, number one is what's the pink spoon? What's the, what's the, the little sample? What's the thing that's going to, uh, that they can get a taste of it to see if they want to invest in the whole. I mean, yes, it's free, but what's not free is time. You know, when right. people are these, so these people are so busy. That's a huge point. Yeah. So, so to me, there, there's always that. You know, so for example, when somebody emails me and says, uh, "Hey, you know, I'd like to maybe partner with you," and then I go check out their website and it's really vague, or "Hey, I've got this program. I think your people might like." I want to see a five, ten, fifteen minute video where you just give me the. Cole's notes. You know, if it's like, hey, I could send you it's five hours of video, I could send you to check that. No. I'm not right, right, right. Play. Yeah, give me give me the quick version. Yeah, I'm busy. Give me short version. And I can see if I actually want to turn up and give you half an hour of my time. Yeah, because the you know, always <coughs> three things: the relevance, credibility, and value. So relevance, that's the headline. So that always has to be nailed. That's the very first thing is do they read the headline and say, Oh, that's me, not so what? Second would be the uh, the credibility. This is the point of view, and making the case of look, you're stressed, and because there's a lot of takes around, what do you do with stress? You know, how do you deal with it? Lots of opinions about this, um, and so that has to be encapsulated in a really pithy way of, uh, and here's our here's our general take on it. Here's our approach. This is our sense of how you deal with stress if you're in these things. And here's the mistakes that people make. So I think the case has to be made. And that can be, you know, the, the kind of teaser video is, look, your doctor, your nurse, you're stressed, you know. So anyways, I just think that that's the very first thing. But then in terms of how to get it out there, uh, to me, th this is the question of, of um, hubs. Yep. And uh, there, well, there's a couple things. Let's say three things. One, there's just word of mouth. And the way word of mouth works is you actually just make something amazing that works and people will talk about it. And then the key 
is to make it very easy for them to share. So of course, you know, a good name, COVIDcom, I think is good, uh, easy to remember. Um, it, when it's online, it's just inherently shareable. Uh, but anything you can do to make it easy, even if it's free, regular, half hour, live, some things where there's an occasion now, and, hey, could you tag, e you email people, can you tag people? But that's another way to make it easy. You could email all the doctors and nurses, hey, we have this post. Um, if you have any doctor, nurse, friends who could use this, feel free to tag them beneath that's you. That's what we did. We said tag your friends who are doctors and nurses. This is very quickly what they're going to get from it. This is why we know about this. We built some authority. People, someone said, hey, Mark, you should tell them you worked in war zones. I was like, well, why? It's not really about me. They were like, because they feel like they're in a freaking war zone right now. So yeah. I tell them that's your background. So it builds authority. And they'll you know, take out these words that sound kooky because any doctor that reads that is going to immediately go, I'm not doing it. So yeah. we're looking at like, how do we make it the simple pink spoons, like memes, little videos, Right. How do we get social proof? Like we're going to get the nurses that came to the early one to say something. It's a bit difficult though, because it's like they're not allowed to wear their uniforms when they recommend something. So there's a few barriers. And then, then the hubs, you know, we sent one email to someone and they're like, yeah, I'll send that to 20,000 nurses tomorrow. And we're like, whoa, okay. That was a good use of my time to mail them. <laughs> you know, it's, uh... Yeah. It's um, I, oh, one thing I was going to say in terms of the asking people to tag it's, you know, if you email people and you say, not just, uh, I mean, you could ask them to tag people in a post, but you could also say, here's a pre-written Facebook post. The mistake people make in this right. word of mouth is they say, they kind of hope people will talk about it. Or, hey, could you spread the word? But then people sit down, oh God, what do I say? Uh, and then I'll do it later. And then they never do it. So the cut and paste, very helpful. So word of mouth is one thing. Second is, is are the referral things. Uh, mechanisms set up where people who've already engaged in and done the program a direct ask of some sort, would you be willing to help spread the word? And then again, here's the cut and paste here. You can tag people, uh, just directly engaging and asking people to spread the word. And then of course, there's this, this question of hubs of where do these people hang out? And as you say, if you can figure out who's already connected to the doctors and nurses, who has the trust of them? Is there somebody who has an email list like this? Who, you know, and are there, for example, I mean, there was a guy I knew, Years ago, uh, Dyke Drummond, and he worked with burned out MDs. That was his thing, you know. So it, it might be interesting just even Googling, uh, well, yeah, burned out doctors. Uh, and maybe there are people who lead retreats, authors who've read, written books on this topic. Of, you know, and this is one of the things people think these authors are so inaccessible. If you're looking for hubs, go to Amazon, do a search for this issue that people have and find the authors and a lot of them you could send an email to and hear back from right away we just imagine because oh they have a book so they're famous they're just what you know they're on a plane to go see oprah today and you know very rarely true i have this from people as well like here's people say i actually offer this out the other day as a facebook post i say here's how to get me to respond to you send me a very short message that tells me concisely what you want if you have a personal link to me mention it if you can offer me some value for me, like even just something funny, whatever connection, great. But if you just keep it short, I will almost you make me one short request. I will yes. almost certainly do that because it takes me, if it takes me a minute to read the email and one minute 20 to respond positively, I'll give you the extra 20 seconds. And, and this is just not obvious to most people. I get these fucking super long Facebook messages from people I've never met and I just delete them because I'm like, I don't know you. This is going to take 10 minutes to read. Yeah, exactly. When you're reaching out to a hub, real short. Um, and, and to me, the, the purpose of that first email is just, is there a fit? You're trying to cut to the chase. I've got this. It seems like it would be a fit kind of generally. Is there any interest there? Um, is there any openness? That's basically it. That's all you're trying to accomplish is that first filter um, of kind of do they want more info? And if they want more info, then there's possibly a longer email. But of course, if you're doing this outreach to hubs, you can have both of those pre-written, basically templated, you know, and just, like I was working with one client and she, oh God, what was it? She, oh, there, oh yeah, she, she, she realized just life coaches were, were a particular niche for her that she could reach out to, or parenting coaches in particular. And so, well, it's gonna be the same basic email every time. I mean, yes, you'll personalize it. Here's how I know you. Here's how I came across you. Or here's what I liked on your website or whatever. 
is going to make that connection. But basically, it's the same and very short. Second nope. email. I, we got one admin volunteer to do 10 hours. She said, I've got 10 hours work I can give you next week. I said, great. So here's what I want you to do. Here's one email. I want you to find all the NHS trusts in the UK, send that one email adapted to each of those trusts. It's two, 10 hours of boring work, but it's yeah. not 100 hours. It's literally just sitting down and emailing all those right people. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, and then, of course, you know, if there are people who, who I mean, are there people who are advocates for the NHS who are better known, you know, in the UK and uh, people who speak, speak out a lot who maybe, I mean, maybe they would find this, you know, something of value that they could be sharing with, with these folks. Um, are there nonprofits, you know, that also support nurses and doctors? Uh, you know, are there events where they gather, you know, not live anymore, but there must be online networks, associations, newsletters, um, Facebook pages, blogs that they tend to frequent. Um, to me, this is, you know, once you've got the kind of word of mouth and the referral systems dialed, uh, or not once, it's a Venn diagram, you could start wherever, but this hubs thing becomes very, um, very, very useful. And, you know, and of course, whenever we're reaching out to a hub, there's these three wins, like I got this from George Cow, it's like a triangle. And of course, there's got to be a win for you. You got to benefit from reaching out to the, mm. the hub. Second, it's got to be a benefit to the hub. They yeah, yeah, yeah. Win out of it. And Even third, if they look good, right? Like they look good. They help their people somehow, right? Well, and that's the third thing. It's got to be a win for their people. Yeah, yeah. Because um, then, if any one of those, if it's not a win, and where you're gonna utterly destroy your reputation is if a hub endorses you, and then their people come back and say, "What the fuck was that?" Right, right, right. I've had that. Like I've referred people and they've said, hey, what did you, this guy, you sent me him, he can't write. I was like, oh, I felt really bad. I had put him forward. Trust is broken. You don't realize this, that when you ask someone to recommend you, you're risking their trust with their people. You're yeah. like, that's the risk they're taking for their trust. So sometimes people say, can you recommend this course of mine that I've never seen or done? I'm like, no, because if it's terrible, then I'm breaking trust with my people. Yeah, amen. What they want is their people to come back and say, thank you so much. Oh my God, Mark Walsh's thing was amazing. Wow, that was a real game changer for me. That's what they want to hear. Uh, and anything short of that is is a, is just not ideal. So it's, it, yeah, amen. Had an example of that. We were trying to get people from the embodiment conference, the speakers on the conference to share about it. And uh, the problem we had is we couldn't put everyone's picture on the conference. And I said, I said to Danielle, I said, Danielle, we can't ask them to share till we get their picture up because otherwise it makes them look low status. It makes mm -hmm. them look less important. They don't want to look that way to their students and that's fair enough. So we have to get their picture up so they can be seen next to Peter Levine and they can go, look, my picture's next to Peter Levine. They get a status hike from it. They look good. So they get something from it as well as helping us out as well as helping their students out. Like that was really necessary. Yeah, and it's good to, you know, and this is a hot tip on approaching how I interviewed about, um, kind of interviewed about online summits. And the person said, do you have any advice about approaching hubs? And I said, yeah, approach every hub as if they might be on the verge of a nervous breakdown. <laughs> right. Because it's true. It's uh, most, most of the people were just stretched thin. And so if you approach in that way, and so, you know, as you said, short email. Why? Because they're maxed out. They, they, their email busy. inbox is so busy. So busy. So if you send, uh, if somebody sends me this, I, I've gotten these emails, and I'm, I'm sure you have to, they have, as you've said, long emails, and here's my story, and here's you know where I've been struggling, but here's my triumph, and all this. And I read it, and I say, you have no idea what my life is like. That's what you've indicated in sending right. this. Yeah. You've I've shown a degree of selfishness, I would say. You haven't shown yeah. consideration. There's an entitlement, you know, and one of the yep. other things that suggested for everyone thinking about approaching hubs is it's really worth sitting down and making a list of all the reasons they shouldn't give you any time and shouldn't endorse you. <laughs> it's good to have that in mind as an adult, just as you know, Mark was saying, of, um, because they could screw up their whole reputation with their people. It doesn't take a lot of bad recommendations to lose a lot of trust. So yeah. good to have that in mind as you're approaching. Tad, as ever, your wellspring of wisdom. Really appreciate you giving your time for free once again. I hope this has helped some people out there. You've been on the show a couple of times, so I recommend those. Also, personal thank you. You recommended George Cal to me, who I interviewed yesterday, who's amazing. 
So, uh, and, the, and Mark Silver, you also recommended to me. So you've got a, a huge amount of trust in who you recommend to me now. So as, yeah. as a good case study, you've, you know, like that's built a lot of relationship with me. That's built a lot of gratitude with me. And all you did was send an email and said, hey, these, these two guys are cool. You know, that was maybe five minutes of your time. And now I'm like, how can I help you, Dad? You know, because it's, it's like that had loads of value for me, that introduction. And those guys were both great. So I think that's a real positive example. And we've had them both on the show. You know, if listeners want to get some more of this, um, where can people find you, Tad? Where's, where's the place to look? Best place is uh, marketingforhippies.com. Such a great brand. Everyone remembers that. I tell my students that. Even if they're like, yeah, but I'm not a hippie. And who's he? The, the? Even if they get annoyed about it, they remember the name. So it's a great brand, great brand. Okay, can't recommend Tad enough, so do check his stuff out. Lots of good free stuff and cheap eBooks and things you can get there. The niching stuff we've talked about in past episodes more absolutely vital today. So listeners, I hope that has helped everyone. Tad, do you have a kind of closing message for anyone running a small business out there who may be struggling a little bit now? Yeah, um, you've got to make your business safe for people to approach but also sustainable for you. Those are the two things that you're gonna have to balance moving forward. How does it become safe and accessible for the people to approach you? Yes, but sustainable for you. And in this time of COVID, don't throw out the sustainability piece for you. Boom, you're a legend. Tad, thank you so much for your help.